friends, thanks for joining me today. Today, we'll be making this awesome ensemble. Believe it or not, it's a twofer. Oh yeah, and it was made out of a tank top. Let's get started. Hey guys, uh, thank you so much for joining me again. This is awesome. Um, tutorial number two. Look at my flashy outfit I have on it. I know you can't really see it behind this giant desk. This is a really, I know this looks flashy. It's really just the fabric. It's its beautiful fabric um, that I found at Affordable Textiles in Toronto. Um, it's a four-way stretch, me and my four-way stretches. Um, but it's forgiving, it's awesome, it's busy. I'm not really one to wear much jewelry, so for me to have kind of a flashy fabric is something that's kind of cool. Um, you know, you could wear this as separate elements, you know, truly you could layer this little top over a button-up shirt um, and wear it to the office with a pair of jeans or slacks or something. And same with the skirt, you could always pair it down with um, you know anything from a t-shirt to a turtleneck if it's cold put a nice blazer over top easy breezy or you could wear it as a onesie as I like to say to whatever your next event is or out for a really lovely dinner um, I made this piece this twofer out of believe it or not tank top to get started on this pattern I like last time have my um, paper already pulled. I have done my center line. One thing that I know I did differently on this pattern from the last is I wanted to mark down um, because we're making um, and you know I should mention this pattern can be for a two-piece or we can have it just be one long uh, body clinging dress if you want. It's going to be sleeveless. We can always add sleeves at a later time, which I might make into another tutorial. Um, but what's really important to me here is because I want the separation of the top and the bottom to be at your natural waist, um, it's super important that you figure out where your natural waist is. I would say about a couple finger widths um, higher than your belly button. I set my uh, measure tape on the, that's the bone and measured down to my natural waist and it's about 14 and a quarter inches. <clears throat> so I've done that, I've placed that measurement on my straight line on my paper. Um, I'll move my singular camera over for you to see. But um, yeah, so I measured down from my, the bone to my natural waistline, marked that line straight across with my straightaway ruler. Um, before I've traced anything whatsoever, I just did a straight line as my guide, which would be my center front, center back. Measured down, I happen to be 14 and a quarter inches. Um, so measured down 14 and a quarter inches um, from a mark that I just generally made at the top of the line, which I will show you. Um, took my L square and went straight out to say, yep, this is my natural waistline. And then I decided, generally what I like, I like high-waisted, long skirts, usually to just pass my knee. Um, they sit nicely, they fit nicely. You're never worried about reefing them down because they're, you know, dancing up. Um, they just, they're, they're a good length that you can wear for evening or day. It's just a really versatile cut. So that's why I like generally skirts to just about my knee or just below my knee by like an inch or two. So how I found that next measurement, so <clears throat> when I went down 14 and a quarter inches to my natural waist um, and kind of marked that spot, I then just kind of held on to that spot with my finger, there it is on my tummy, um, put the measure tape starting from the beginning again right at that spot and just walked, you know, holding the measure tape going down my body um trying to be as straight as possible but walking down my body because i'm the only person here right now so i can only i'm the only one taking the measurement um and figuring out exactly roughly how long it is for my natural waist to just pass my knee um it's about um it's about 26 inches for me i'm um 
I'm five. I'm just about five four, five five. Um, I have a short torso and long legs. Um, we say long legs; they're longer than my torso. So um, that measurement's always going to differ for you. Um, so do measure what is best for you. Don't measure what's best for me because I'm not wearing your clothes. You are. Um, so yeah. Again, I've marked from the natural waist to my hemline. That can always change. It can be longer or shorter, whatever you want. Um, and once those marks have been placed, I then laid my pin tank top, which fits like a glove, over top of the pattern, just like we did um, in the last tutorial when we laid it on top of the, um, <clears throat> the paper. So you'll see we have our center front, center back line. Um, that was our generic neckline where we, I, I just decided that's where it's going to go. So we put our generic neckline there and then, um, you'll see we've also made our natural waistline and then move down to do our hemline. I could denote here that this is my hem. Um, maybe I will just for tutorial purposes. I think that's important. Um, because like we had in our last tutorial, it's super important for me to not skip steps. Um, and I have to assume that you don't know exactly what it is you're doing. Or maybe you do, but either way, it's um, for those of us who are joining us that don't know exactly what they're doing, it's important that um, they know it's important to mark, 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 mark. So, all right, I will stop holding the camera now. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, we're laying our tank top down onto our um, piece of paper. And then again, just like we did before, you know, we trace and did our dotted lines all the way around, yada, yada, yada. And that's good. So pretty much we do the whole parameter of the, um, of the tank top with the exception of the tank top hem. We don't need that line. Um, now, if you'll notice on my um, silhouette, I have a red line know if you can see that I'm hoping you can see that so this would be the original the black tank top line I've made a new dotted line um, there's quite a discrepancy between my uh, natural waist uh, circumference and my hips um, when I say quite a discrepancy the measurement on my natural waist is 28 whereas on my hips it's 40 so that is a 12 inch difference and um, you know it is what it is so I need to make sure that I have enough play in the fabric to um, accommodate for a fuller booty if you will so when I measured uh, the width from the dotted in edge of the tank top to the center front center back line it gave me just about nine inches so if I take that nine inches and multiply it by four because you have two halves on the front and two halves on the back so that's four hey this is where our um, simple math comes into play um, nine four is our 36 inches so I have I needed to make up I don't want to say four inch difference um, there was a four inch discrepancy between the pattern piece and the actuality of my hips um, now, because we are working or we will be working in a four-way stretch, there is some play in the fabric. Um, so I just simply added an extra quarter inch to this seam. And once we true up the lines, um, it'll give me about an extra inch of play um, in, in the actual pattern itself. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, I'm gonna give myself a bit of extra seam allowance on this uh, when it comes time to construct, but I'm hoping that the extra inch in the pattern will be enough for, um, enough give to not be too snug on my hips where it looks like I'm being just like cinched in and the fabric's all wrenchy and stuff. So. Yeah, that's, um, as always, this is a trial and error thing. Um, you know, I say trial and error loosely. Um, I have made this pattern a few times. I love this pattern so much, and I think it's so freaking cute. I've gotten more compliments on um, this twofer than I can shake a stick at. Um, like I said, 
the tank top cost me six dollars and then it's the cost of your materials however much money you want to spend on the fabric I have bought every single one of those fabrics plus this one at affordable textiles in Toronto I love it it's at Queen and Augusta the guys who own the shop are fantastic they have beautiful selections of fabric and um, I just always find myself going there to buy um, new fabrics and purchase from your local guys and um, it'll be good so you don't have to spend an arm and a leg to look nice I guess is what I'm trying to say um, so with that being said guys let's get to the actual drafting and construction of this um, so yeah we've got our lines set out we've got our um, piece named um, which is the two-piece ensemble that's what I'm going for sorry I should have brought my rulers over <clears throat> That was poor planning on my part. But we're just going to get to chewing up our lines. So, you know, committing to these curves and lines and um, working with our rulers. It's one of my favorite things to do is to chew things up. Um, you know, you're, you're committing to stuff. It's good. You know, it's, it's good. So, um, I do hope that you are enjoying what... I am putting out there to the universe. Um, I do get, you know, people are usually pretty uh, surprised, you know, when they do ask, oh, where did you get whatever said product is that they like that I'm wearing? Um, you know, they're always really surprised that I've actually made the item uh, usually from scratch, um, whatever it is that I am rocking that they like. Um, you know, making, I know, is not, it's not such a common thing anymore. So it's, um, I guess it's quite surprising when you do come across somebody who does take the time and actually loves the process of creating and making. So, um, you know, I really hope that you're getting as much out of this as, as I'm, I'm hoping you are. I really, you know, I say that because... You never 100% know, but um, I really hope that you're learning. I hope that you're getting inspired. I hope that you're getting confident or, you know, at least learning how to not be afraid to take chances because, um, and when I say take chances, it's like make a mistake, draw a line, and then when you cut and sew that garment, maybe it's not exactly as you thought it would be, but, you know, going through the process of making that item Oh, now the light bulb went off and you understand, like, oh, right, I should have put that line over a quarter of an inch. Or maybe, Lindsay, she's such a sausage and she didn't really explain it. She needs to explain things better. Um, you know, maybe you decided to speak up and say, Lindsay, you have to be more precise with your words and say something so that we know that, you know, Lines go here, not there. You can't just keep all the information up in your head. And sometimes I'm guilty of that. Um, but I do my best to kind of get the words out as much as possible because that's the point of this. And now that we have our lines all roughed in, um, I'm just going to do a quick once over of this bad boy. So we have all of our lines kind of trued up. Um, I do have it label our two-piece ensemble. This is our top front and back. This is our skirt front and back. We have our center front line, our waistline, and I'm going to mark that that's our hem because everything's got to be marked. All right, guys. So now we get to tracing. That's a super fun part. Um, what, so I, I started prepping. Um, I did lay our, um, our vellum, our see-through paper, Look how awesome they see through that is. Um, you can get vellum at your local craft store. I have tried getting it on Amazon. I haven't had the best luck, um, but you know, you might have better luck than I do. Um, I purchased this through Curry's Art Supply Store. Um, it's not cheap, but it's not crazy expensive. It's definitely something that I do work with often. So if any of you guys have suggestions in Ontario or Canada where I can get vellum um, inexpensively, I would love to hear from you because it's something I do use on a regular. And yes, I know it's paper. And yes, I know we should reduce, reuse, recycle. But unfortunately, when it comes to drafting, you do need to use fresh 
paper when you are tracing in order to create a new pattern. So uh, vellum is the one thing that I generally use new. <clears throat> so um, we take our fresh piece of vellum, we lay it across our pattern piece. Um, again, you only trace half of your pattern piece because you want to mirror it. Um, so you trace the front. Now, because we're cutting on both the front and back, so the exact same pieces, um, but we're only going to put a zipper on one of the sides, you will notice on the front here, I have a big, well, firstly, I have the length of the zipper, but I have a big fat note saying, note, zipper line, and then uh, cut on center back only. I'm actually going to change that to the center front because I think it would be really pretty to have um, that beautiful rose gold zipper in the front. Um, even though I'm going to keep it zipped up all the time, I'm not really one to show a lot of skin. Um, I do still think that that uh, the zipper down the center front line would just be a really beautiful way to draw, you know, attention to your face and the focal point, which is that. Isn't that what Madonna does? With the neoprene fabric, it doesn't fray, it doesn't shift, it doesn't move, it doesn't do anything. So I'm not even actually adding any seam allowance to the arm seam. I'm going to have a sleeveless top. Um, I don't have to serge it. I don't have to do anything. It's so wonderful. So, um, and that too with the neckline. So it's going to have no seam line on the neck or the sleeve. It's really just where I'm attaching on the shoulder seam, the side seam, and I'm also going to be folding up some fabric like I am here on the underside. I prefer to finish my edges like that. So I traced, um, I have my fold line. I'm going to retrace my other half to be up our left side and our right side. Um, and two, you will see that I've left, you know, almost two inches at the bottom. I'll give you the exact measurement. Um, but I've left um, close to here. Let's be precise in our words. Um, one inch and five eighths is what I decided my fold line to be. And that's what I've used as my fold, which is going to go up and under, which I will show you how to do when we actually I point to my sewing machine once we construct the garment. Trace the top. We're going to trace the bottom. I've already traced the bottom. I'm not super fast unbelievable um as mentioned you know you trace um you take your vellum onto the paper trace the outside add your seam allowance uh which i've actually done at three eighths of an inch so once you trace your outside line you add an additional three eighths of an inch on the outside um that'll be your seam allowance fold your vellum over onto your center line as so and then you're going to trace around the other side so that once you open it you have a full flat skirt piece which will act as both your front and your back and again I have a big fat note on here saying note that this line is only to be cut for the center back only which is where the zipper is going to go. You'll also, I think my ponytail is too high, it keeps hitting the light. Um, you'll also notice that I have like this extra chunk at the top. You're probably like, what the heck is that for? Well, my friends, it is for that fold line I was talking about that we're going to have, um, just like on the shirt, we're going to do the same thing on the skirt, that fancy little fold line. And when I fold the fabric down, I took the pattern piece and added, it should be three inches, let's just triple confirm, it's actually three inches, three eighths, extra allowance from the top of that line, so it's an additional three inches and three eighths up from the original waistline that I left, so that when it came time to figure out exactly what that pattern piece would look like, I folded down the additional piece of vellum and then literally just traced the, I'm just throwing my tools everywhere. I literally just traced the existing waistline as so, and then also added the seam allowance. So even though it looks kind of funny, 
like this. Once, see how it's like with that particular sound effect? See that it looks a little funny? Once it's all constructed together, it's going to fit like a glove. So it'll be perfect. Okay, guys. So I've come back and I've, I've got my sweater on because it is, um, it's a little cool down in the studio um, <clears throat> when you're wearing next to nothing. Um, so how cute is that? See, you could also wear this skirt with a nice um, crop sweater and make it a little bit more formal. So I probably wouldn't wear this shirt underneath it, but it's actually a really nice little combination. Um, anyway, back to what the heck I was saying. Um, one happy mistake I ran into while I was pinning this, um, one thing at a time, Lens, um, is I actually don't have enough fabric, believe it or not, for um, all the pieces. Even though there's literally only two pattern pieces, I do need to cut two of each. So two skirt bottoms and two top, two top tops. <laughs> um, so you know, it's not going to stop what we're doing. Um, I actually just folded the, uh, the top in half and I'm going to cut it on the fold. And you know, this kind of happy thing happens and it's given me an opportunity to use another funky fabric that I really love. Um, it's a pleather. It's a laser cut pleather. If you can see, it's got holes in it, so it's gonna show some skin, which is nice. But I'll use that as the um, as the back. This is exactly why I always buy too much fabric. It's to have extras for these fun little times when I need to, you know, make a back of a shirt. Um, one thing you're going to want to make sure of on your pattern piece is that you've marked down where your zipper is going. Um, again, not to skip steps. Um, I need to make sure I get these things out of my head and out of my mouth because I think about them. I automatically just do it. It's like autopilot for me and I never actually say it. So, um, again, shame on me working on it. It's only tutorial two. By tutorial five, I will be saying so many things you won't even want to watch it. Um, so um, on your center back um, at your waistline, so this is your natural waistline, this is the excess. Um, center back, natural waistline, um, you can either lay your zipper down on the center back, center front line, and denote, mark, you. that's where the zipper is. I'm really only going up, um, where are we at? About almost an inch, almost an inch uh, from where the actual zipper ends. Um, use your discretion. You could go up, you know, anywhere between three eighths of an inch upwards to your discretion. Sorry, you're gonna wanna lay your zipper down on your center front as well and mark where it ends um, from the center front down uh, so that you don't cut too far. So I have done that on the actual pattern piece itself and um, and marked it and gone up about, again, an, about another inch or so. But to your discretion, you do you um, anywhere between three eighths of an inch and up. But like I said, I want to showcase my zippers and show as much of the zipper as possible because that's really the feature on this very um, muted dress. I don't want to say plain, it's just muted. It's not loud. It's a very simple silhouette. It's a very mild color that's going to transfer from day to night, um, evening to um, everyday wear, truly. I mean, it's a four-way knit. You could actually wear this to uh, the beach, the office, the gym, coffee, whatever it is that you're doing, you could actually wear these pieces as separates or as a combo for a variety of different things. So that's kind of the beauty of it. It's like highly versatile, functional fashion. Yeehaw, isn't that where things are supposed to be going? Um, I was thinking about the next tutorials. I found these awesome throw pillows at Winners. Um, I believe they were wool, um, wool cotton blend. They were really sumptuous pillows, but they were like, $45 a pillow. Either way, it's more than I would have and wanted to spend on a pillow. And um, I was really only buying the pillow because I loved 
the contrast of this funky zipper, which was very obvious sitting at the top of the, um, of the pillow itself. That was really the reason why I was buying it. I just, I loved it so much and I needed it in my life, but not for $45 a pillow. So I'm thinking I have these kind of funky, um, fabrics and stuff like that, that, you know, maybe we'll do, um, maybe we'll do a recycle tutorial and, uh, I can show you my funky zippers that I bought. Um, okay guys. So here's where we get a little bit, um, we go a little bit rogue. So remember on our front and back piece, um, we only have to cut that straight, straight line. Wouldn't it be nice to see me? Um, on our front and back pattern piece, we only have to cut that straight line um, on the center back, which is essentially one of the pattern pieces. So I've taken my pins off my um, center back garment and I'm just gonna cut really slowly, take my time, keep my hand and my arm and my wrist really straight while holding the fabric and the paper down. Um, and I'm just cutting the one layer of fabric and that is gonna be our zipper line. <clears throat> so just take your time, uh, no sense in rushing this because, um, well, we don't have any fabric after this. So if we screw this up, then our tutorial is done. So I've taken my time, we've done our cut, it's awesome. It's literally only just to the mark where I marked the where the zipper is ending and that's it. I'm going to do the exact same thing to the um, front of the garment top and then I'm going to cut um, out of my funky die cut fabric and we're going to get to construction.